congruent angles, arcs, chords, and we have three theorems. We're at 12.2b. We're up to five previous videos for chapter 12, which if you've missed them and you become lost or confused, you can click in the description and see them in the geometry playlist. Within a circle or congruent circles, congruent arcs are two arcs that have the same measure. If you look, these are both x degrees. Arc AB is congruent to arc CD. They're congruent arcs. So for your notes, we have theorem 12.2.2, and it's broken into three parts. This is part one. We have two and three down below. And we have our theorem, the hypothesis, and the conclusion. So part one says, in a circle or congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. Angle EAD, this angle here, is congruent to angle BAC, this angle here. Our conclusion is that segment DE, this one right here, is congruent to segment BC. For the second part of the theorem, we have congruent chords have congruent arcs. So we know these two chords are congruent. Well, then the arcs are congruent. Segment ED, right here, we can even see a little congruent mark on it, can't we? And over here, it's congruent to B segment BC. So our conclusion is that arc DE, this green arc here, is congruent to arc BC that green arc. And the third part of the theorem says congruent arcs have congruent central angles. So arc ED right here is congruent to arc BC right here. So our conclusion is that angle DAE, this angle right here, is congruent to angle BAC. If you think about it, these are all connected, aren't they? The converses of the parts of theorem 12.2.2 are also true. So theorem 12.2.2, part 1, said congruent central angles have congruent chords. And the converse of that part 1 would be congruent chords have congruent central angles. See how they swapped places? So here's a two-column proof. And we need to prove that segment BC, this segment right here, is congruent to segment DE, this segment right here. And it's given us that angle BAC, this angle here, is congruent to DAE, this angle here. So we have our statements and our reasons. And number one, we have angle BAC is congruent to angle DAE, and that was given. Number two is that segment AB right here, this radius, is congruent to segment AD, this radius, because they correspond to each other as far as these two triangles are concerned. Segment AC, this radius, is congruent to segment AE, this radius. Our reason, all radii of a circle are congruent. Statement three is triangle BAC, this triangle here, is congruent to triangle DAE, this triangle here. And our reason is SAS, side angle side, for steps two and one. We learned about side angle side back in video 4.5b. There'll be a link in this description if you need it. But our side radius angle, the central angle, and our other side, the other radius, is our SAS. That brings us to number four, that segment BC up here is congruent to segment DE here because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We learned about that in 4.7. There's going to be a link to that too. All right, so there's our two column proof. And we proved that the two chords are congruent. We can find the measure of an arc by using algebra. It's giving us that segment AB, this chord, is congruent to segment CD, that chord. So this chord is congruent to this chord. 
and we can find the measure of arc AB. It's telling us it's 3x degrees. Well, arc AB is congruent to arc CD because congruent chords have congruent arcs. The measure of arc AB is equal to the measure of arc CD because of the definition of congruent arcs. And substituting in our given values, for arc AB we have 3x, and for C, arc CD we have 2x plus 27. We write them in, and we can subtract 2x from each side and solve for x. That gives us 1x is equal to 27. Well, if arc AB is 3x degrees, then it's 3 times 27, it's 81 degrees. Now here we have two circles, and it's giving us that circle Q, this circle, is congruent to circle T, so we have two congruent circles. It's also giving us that arc PR, right here, is congruent to arc SU, right down here. We need to find the measure of angle STU. We need to find this angle measure. Well, it's telling us that this arc is congruent to this arc, and that this one is 5y plus 5, and this one is 7y minus 43. We substitute in the given values, and we have 5y plus 5 is equal to 7y minus 43. We subtract 5y from both sides, and we're left with 5 is equal to 2y minus 43. We add 43 to both sides, and we get 48 is equal to 2y. We divide both sides by the coefficient 2, and we get that 24 is equal to y, or y is equal to 24. Now, we were looking for 7y minus 43, so we put in 24 for y. We get 7 times 24 minus 43. That's 168 minus 43. We know that... STU is, angle STU is 125 degrees. So we know this is 125 degrees here. And you know what? If that's 125 and they're congruent circles and these are congruent arcs, we know that's 125 degrees, don't we? Now I want you to remember the shortest distance between a point and a line is the length of a perpendicular segment from the point to the line, which is going to bring us to our next theorem. So for your notes, here's theorem 12.2.3. We have a theorem, a hypothesis, and a conclusion, and the theorem says in a circle, if a radius or a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So if it's perpendicular to this chord, it's bisecting it. It's splitting it in half, isn't it? And the arc also. So we've got CD, this radius is perpendicular to EF, this chord. Our conclusion is that this segment CD, this radius, bisects segment EF, this chord, and arc EF. Our next theorem for your notes is 12.2.4, and it says, in a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord is a radius, or a diameter. So we've got segment JK, it's a diameter, isn't it? It's perpendicular to this chord GH, this segment GH. Our conclusion, conclusion is that this Diameter, this segment JK, is a diameter of circle A. See, we have a right angle there. It's perpendicular. Using radii and chords, take a look at this diagram. We have circle A. We can see we have a chord BD. AE here is a radius, isn't it? So is AD. And we can see from this point right here, 
to A is a length of 3, and we can see that this little green area, this little segment right here, is a 2, right? So we can find BD. First thing we do is draw radius AD right here. AC plus CE equals AE. AC plus CE equals AE. This, three plus, this 2 equals a 5. So if this radius is a 5, then the one we drew, this blue one, is a 5 because the radii of circle are all congruent, right? So now we can use the Pythagorean theorem and say CD squared, that's this half of the chord, plus AC squared is going to equal AD squared because we have a right triangle, right? CD squared plus 3 squared, because that's a 3, is equal to 5 squared, because we know that's a 5 now. That means CD squared plus 9 is equal to 25, and we subtract the 9 from both sides, and we find out that CD squared, this portion right here, is equal to 16. We can take the 2 exponent off and put a radical around that side, can't we? So we get CD is equal to the square root of 16, which means it's 4. The third thing we do is find BD. If we know from here to here is a 4, we do 2 times 4, because there's two of these that are congruent, right? It equals 8, so we know BD is equal to 8. We've got segment AE is perpendicular to BD, so AE bisects segment BD, that chord. So a quick recap before we move on to the next lesson. This radius here and this radius here form this central angle, don't they? We have a chord, BC, here. And we have a minor arc right here. It's less than 180 degrees. And a major arc is more than 180 degrees. All right, so that's what we learned in 12.2, A and B. So our next video is going to be for 12.3, which is split into A, B, C, and D, so that you don't have an hour-long video to watch. We're going to discuss sector of a circle and its area in 12.3A. Then we're going to do area of a segment of a circle, 12.3b. Then we're going to talk about arc length, which we did a little bit in the last video. And we're going to discuss measuring angles in radians in 12.3d. So make sure you wrote down these theorems and you've got them easily accessible in your notes and they're legible because I've had notes where I wrote them and later on I couldn't read my own handwriting, so make sure they're nice and clear because that'll help you and your future self in the future, okay? Keep trying, I believe in you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.